This is an interview with Sydney M. Eddy of 2 Clover Lane, Albion, New York. By way of introduction, Mr. Eddy, would you tell me a bit of history about your family, your early life, school days, education, and interests? Because, suppose we begin with your birth, when and where you were born, your parents' names, and when and where they were born, your wife's name, and your children. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My mother was born you know, the day, June 30, 1869, at Route Montgomery County in New York. My father was born January 26, 1866, in Milan, Ohio. I'd like to pay tribute to them for what they did in their few years. My father only lived to be 55, and he caught a great deal in that period. He brought four children, Hazel, Butter, Sidney, and Elsie. He loved mus music, so he had each child learn to play an instrument. He regretted not having a higher education, but made sure each child graduated from college. He was a great churchman and was superintendent of Sunday school for years. He helped found Arnold Gregory Hospital in Elgin and served as secretary. Also, he was secretary of the Elgin Chamber of Commerce. His father was a harness maker in the Milan, Ohio, and moved to West Kendall, New York, where he engaged in the harness business. Arthur was not too well, being troubled with Bright's disease. However, he was ambitious. He picked up a small printing press and became interested in printing. At age 15, he was proprietor of a small newspaper. He sold ads and newspapers for a few cents. He gradually embarked on some personal card sales at 10 cents a dozen. He walked up to the Ridge Road to sell these as far as Gaines, New York. Encouraged with his business, he moved his printing plant to Elbin, New York, and located on the third floor back room of the granite block where family hardware is located. This business grew so he had 12 employees. He had started a weekly newspaper, the Weekly News, and became successful enough so there was need for larger quarters. In 1898, in conjunction with Mr. Radley, a steam laundry operator, they built two blocks side by side on East Bank and Fast Street in Melbourne. The steam generated for the laundry was piped into the Eddy block to run a steam printing press and provide heat. <clears throat> As he just took on more job printing, the newspaper became a burden, so he discontinued that project to concentrate on the job work. Electric power had helped stimulate business. He became noted for his fine four-color process printing. This specialty was used greatly in bird books for Charles K. Reed of Worcester, Massachusetts, and Frank M. Chapman of New York Museum of Natural History in New York City. In 1914, the a a third floor was added to the building and an elevator installed to accommodate a paper stock room at the top floor. The business grew rapidly and took on his took all his energy, so he became weary of the burden. World, one, World War I increased the difficulty of the operation, so he wanted out. After that war, he got to take in Sidney and Eddie as a partner to help carry the business on. He started as a partnership January 1, 1920. However, he was not to enjoy relief for long. On September 20, 1921, he died at 55. The business was carried on under Sidney and increased so that more room was needed. In addition, was built the rear of the Eddy block. However, this was before this was completed, World War II came along, and this project was not completed until after that war. After World War II, Arthur B. Eddy, my son, entered the business and became, and the project continued to grow. In June 23, 1961, a disastrous fire gutted the plant and reduced business by one half. Finally, a new plant was built on Route 98 south of Delby, and the business moved there. Under Arthur B. Eddy, the business continued to grow. As the business grew bigger and load increased, Arthur B. Eddy decided to get help. 
He sold the business in 1977 to Robert R. Remley of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, but he has continued as vice president. I, Sydney Eddy, I attended school in Albany, was graduated from high school in 1914. I went to Hamilton College. My college education was interrupted when World War I came along. The United States declared war on Germany in April 1917. This was my junior year at college. We all enlisted at college, but, <clears throat> but one half of us were thrown out, having failed the physical. We tried other services, but no luck. Finally, Washington called for volunteers for U.S. takeover for the old American Fuel Service, ambulance service, serving with the French Army. This new deal was called the U.S. Army Ambulance Corps, and training was brief at Allentown, Pennsylvania. We went there in June, and in August we sailed for France. By November, we were serving at the front with the second dismounted French cavalry. This was a division of young troops who saw lots of, lots of action, so did we. Some fellows of our ambulance were killed, and some were wounded. I was one of the latter. After peace came, November 11, 1918, we went on to, to Germany for occupation for two months. Then we were sent home in April 1919. The college allowed us to uh, spend one term and give us a degree in 1920. I entered uh, the partnership with a father that January 1920. And that, uh, that was in my, my father's eulogy on uh, April 4. I have one son, Arthur B. Eddy, my first wife. My second wife had three children, which it made us, us a nice family. I started community work in 1920. This work makes it, this year makes it 60 years that I've worked on fun campaigns. My pet hobby is the Arnold Gregory Memorial Hospital. I worked for this hospital for over 50 years. We conducted three fun campaigns in that time for new buildings and so forth. I was an elder in the, in the first Presbyterian Church of Albion over 30 years. One of our favorite community service clubs is the, is the Rotary Club of Albion. We are charter members and have worked together in Albion community activities since 1922. Retirement does not come easy when one has been so active. We still try to help where we can and still enjoy that. I have a few reminiscences there. Uh, as a young boy, we were interested in, in automobiles. Oh. Uh, it's, it's, it's interesting, in, in that time, most every city built an auto, auto. Now, Syracuse built a Franklin air conditioned, mm -hmm. air, air cooled car, not air cooled. Oh. In Rochester, the Cunningham was built, a very lovely automobile. And of course, in Buffalo, the Pierce Arrow was a, a very fine car, you probably remember. Mm. They also had steamers. For instance, the white steamer, uh, there was one in Elvin that we used to enjoy. Yes. You had to, you had to steam up before you can start out. Oh! <laughs> there was a Carter car. Which what kind? A Carter car. Yes. Not the present. <laughs> uh -huh. This had a large wheel flywheel and uh, the other wheel at right angle so that you could control the speed by moving it in or off from center. Uh -huh. Unusual. Yes. And then the International Harvester uh, car, I recall Dr. Whittier had one of those. It's a little bit like a buggy. It was a buggy with a steering post and no, nothing in front. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Same as a uh -huh. Dr. Whittier. Yeah. Uh -huh. And he, he drove, that, drove that around. Uh -huh. Uh, the Cadillacs came into Elgin. Uh, doctors were getting 50 cents for a house call and a dollar for, for a dollar for a house call and 50 cents for office calls. So he took on the agency selling Cadillacs. <laughs> oh. Uh, all yeah. the sir. Uh huh. Well, there are other things. Uh, as kids, we used to enjoy the building of the Buffalo Lockport and Rochester trolley line through here. Of course, every city was doing that then. Oh, yes. So we, we missed a lot of school that time, but it was interesting to watch How that. old were you when they were putting that through about? I don't remember. Well, just probably well, 10, 10 years old. 10 years, yeah. And then the barge canal and the enlarged that, that took a lot of, of 
we had to, we had to <laughs> you don't remember when that was we, put through. Well, yes, we were pretty small. Uh huh. It's interesting also that they got a lot of uh, masons in from Europe on, on that project, and when they got through, there was nothing to do, and that's how cobblestone started. Oh. They, uh huh. They built cobblestone houses for something to do, and that's how this whole area uh, uh, got interested in that. I see. I don't know what else you got. You don't happen to have any uh, uh, pictures of any of your old, uh, your um, Pierce Arrows or anything like that that were around town, do you? No, Pierce Arrow was so recent that uh, when we organized a Rotary Club, the governor was the president of Pierce Arrow Company, the Arrow Company of Buffalo. Oh. And my wife drove Pierce Arrow, so in the first. Mm hmm. Let's see. Did I? Did I get it? Did I tell him about my son? You, you, oh, yeah, um, yeah, I, I yes, it. you I did, it. yes. Well, that's about it. What is this here? Well, that was the fire. That, oh, you didn't, it. you didn't uh, tell me, Mr. Eddie, about, uh, I would like to know a little bit about when uh, the printing company was destroyed by fire. Well, strangely enough, the fire started right across from the Albion Fire Department. Yes. It, and they didn't, they happened to, they fell on duty, they happened to come out. <laughs> Here was this fire, <laughs> it had gone up the elevator shaft, and the fire was three floors high, shooting up the top when he discovered it. Mm -hmm. So it had a pretty good start. Mm -hmm. And it, uh, well, they were fighting at 12 hours. I got the pictures of it. Not here. Yeah, that, that was pretty pretty bad. And when you're shut down like that, it's strange enough your business friends evaporate. <laughs> Start all oh, over again. I was going to ask you uh, how you got started again. Well, we, we had a trailer come in. We were running a trailer for our office out back of the block. Oh. And the back part of the office, uh, the new part of the building was not in too, too bad a shape. We got that in action. And then we uh, rented a a big, big, like a, oh, like a barn mm -hmm. uh, nearby, and put machines up, the binder machines up in there. So we we bumped along there. <laughs> it was pretty rough. Uh huh. But uh, everybody was with us, the whole community. Of course, right? Oh yes. And this is uh, after after the fire, we built a new business. And of course, we considered going elsewhere, but uh, we decided to stay and build the new business on 98. Yes. And, and uh, we were cited by the Chamber of Commerce up with this as, as the business of the month. And then they, they had a Chamber of Commerce tour through the plant. The whole division. Here's the composition and the press room and the binary and so forth. Mm hmm. You had to buy all new machinery? Yes. After the fire? Mainly, it was amazing how they could get them back in action. Even those Lanantan machines, there probably 2,000 parts of those with the mats and everything. We had a man come up from New York. That was his specialty. There were three of those. He spent two weeks just getting those in action. Oh, well, yes. He got them going. That's it. That was his business. Did you actually work, uh, uh, run any of the machines? Mr. Eddy? Oh, yes. Well, uh -huh. Here's the problem. I, uh, I've been in college, and I've been to France for two years. I had, when we were kids, we used to feed the press by hand. And that's all. So I had, I had to get ready, and he died within the year, so he, he was ill and died. So I had to work about 12, 16 hours a day to find out what to tell him to do. Oh, <laughs> yes. Uh-huh. And that's, that's how I learned. I had to. And you had some good men, uh, good employees, yes, we to were, bring we were, you through we were fortunate, yeah. your tragic fire. Yeah, well, we uh, we had them work on cleaning up and like that, so they didn't, they didn't lose any income. That's mm -hmm. the weekly news right there, that the, the paper that he started. Oh, yes. The, the weekly news. Yeah, the weekly news. Yes. Okay. He got so he called it the weekly nuisance because, <laughs> because he got interested in job work. 
Uh, you were telling me something about uh, the front page of the weekly news. Uh, it used to be fill in. The boilerplate, they call it boilerplate. It's, it's filler stuff now. Uh, that's, filler. Not about. that's all filler. Uh huh. Could you tell me a little bit about that? Well, there was a service. You could buy, buy any of that business. It was a service. The main local stuff is on the inside, and the outside mm -hmm. was just water, but he could run that off ahead, and mm -hmm. so, so he'd get it out faster. Okay. Um, and is there any other um, hobbies that you had, Mr. Eddie, that might be interesting? Well, I, uh, well my, I guess my hobby was community work, saving the bottom, as my father was. And you belong to what organizations <clears throat> besides the Rotary and Presbyterian Church? Well, the hospital and the church. And hospital. The, Rotary, uh, the hospital was quite a hobby of yours. Yeah. My father was on the first secretary when they founded the hospital, in 1915. Oh, yes. And then uh, since then, we've booked three times, and we're still active in the thing. <laughs> yes. Of course, there's, there's a lot of golf and fishing like that, but when you're tied up like that, what is didn't have any time. Didn't have any time. I had tender business. Well, how about when you retired, Mr. Eddy? Uh, didn't you find time then? Well, no, I, one thing was that I continued. I was, uh, I was president and I was chairman of the board when Dick became president. And uh, I had an office there and I used to do a lot of my community work from there. From where? From, from my office there at the new plant. Oh, at the new plant. Yeah, I, I see. Yeah. Uh huh. And then, uh, well, of course, when he sold out, I, I got out. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> but of know. course, you had to have uh, some play along with your work. Uh, you mentioned golfing? No, I, I didn't. Well, you we, didn't golf? we used to have the Eagle Harbor golf, golf course. I, oh, yes. I, put some I recall <laughs> that to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. well, well, That's Just the only golf I ever, ever did. I see. Oh, I like to travel. My father liked to drive. It was amazing. He worked like the Dickens, and all of a sudden, boom, he'd go to Jerusalem or someplace. Of course, he went to the World's Sunday School reunion. Oh. Representing the Sunday school here. Uh, the yeah, where, where was that held? In Belgium, I think. And he was in Germany. Oh, well, what year was that? Around uh, when Mr. Van Norman went? No, that wouldn't be that. No. I don't know, but he was in Germany in 1913 when the Kaiser was getting ready to go to war. He oh. Said they were, uh, Your father. Yeah. He said oh. they were marching up and down and getting all, getting all set to go. Oh. Of course, you know, he was a great admirer of Woodrow Wilson. He was a died in the world Republican, but Woodrow Wilson tried for that uh, League of Nations. Yes. And uh, he's a great admirer for anybody that, that would do a job like he did there with the Congress. He, he sold Europe and came back in Congress, turned him down, and killed him. He, he didn't last mm. long. So my father was a great admirer of him. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, we got the United Nations. <laughs> yes. Same same idea. Let's see. I think uh, those two years in, with, with the French French Army, I, think I, got, uh, I wouldn't trade those my college four years for those. Those two years are more important. What happened? Could well, you tell me anything about the French connection? Well, there were only fifty guys in a, a division of fifteen thousand Frenchmen. At the Americans, and we had to learn French pretty fast, and they were very nice to us. Yes. We carried. Oh, priests would go up front and go along with us, and then officers too. But we had uh, our division, our French division, was very active. The young fellows, this mountain cavalry, they were very active. So we got credit for eight, eight major battles. Oh. And uh, our division was, the French were sighted, the division was sighted five times across the air. But uh, that was the only 
for combatant forces, the engineers and the amateur medical works in on that. Although we got our own citation. Mm -hmm. Well, it was a very interesting experience. It's a, the thing is, it, we didn't know how we we enlisted for the duration, whatever that might be. Yes. They wanted us to, just then. The, the Bolsheviks were starting in, in Russia. And they tried to get a lot of us to volunteer to go over there after after we occupied Germany. <laughs> and I thought, oh. Some of them did. They went to Russia. Oh, they did. See, the white Russians were trying to make a democracy. But the Bolsheviks got in there and promised everything that that sold the whole thing out. No, we didn't want to go over there. Well, one of my my chums, his brother, went over there. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's very interesting. Um, do you recall any specific uh, incident that uh, might uh, be interesting? Where? In during your World War experience. Well, no, it was all. <clears throat> no, it was all very interesting. Mm -hmm. Of course, those those fellows were all kinds of. Under those conditions, you're pretty close, at least to your friends. Oh yes. And uh, there were all kinds of fellows. We had. Uh, one of them was captain of the football team of the state of Washington, and the other was instructor of uh, English in California State University. And on the other hand, we, <laughs> we had Marty Muldoon, the deputy sheriff from Brooklyn. <laughs> he was a wild son of a gun. <laughs> then we had another guy who was a taxi cab driver in Philadelphia. And so we had all kinds of people, but they had, but yes. we got very I'll close to all of them. All thrown in together oh, and yeah. well, uh, just like any, any uh huh, any uh -huh. yeah. Of course, we never knew when the thing was going to be over. We had we we had this this piece of scare uh, about a week or two before the regular one over eleven. Our general, General Hennock. Uh, What's his name? H e n o q u e, French. He's French general. Uh, he lost his son in the war, and of course, when the Germans came on, they took his wife and daughter. And he, he was, we started celebrating. He wouldn't have any part of that. He said, "Just cut that stuff out. Mm. This means too much to me." Mm -hmm. Well, we lost some of our buddies. It's, uh, that's the way the thing goes. Yes. I, I'm down to about one now. I'm all down. We're in Northern Dunn and Utica Way. He's he getting pretty old. Mm-hmm. He's getting so well. I lost three of our Legion followers right here within the summer. And we started oh, yes. the American Legion post here. Yes. The Le Legion was founded in Paris in 1919 after the war. And I, I, I've been to at post number one. I, I've been to post number one in Paris. Oh. Of course, I've. Always been in the Legion here. Mm -hmm. Our American Legion post is a shared post. A shared post was named after two shared boys, boys, both my playmates. Both were killed in the Hindenburg. Oh, uh huh. So that's, they named the post after them. Do you uh, happen to know anything about the Medina? Uh, American Legion post, uh, was it James Clark oh, yeah. post? No, no I, I don't. Of course, they had one in Medina, they had one in, in Holly. In Holly, too. Uh huh. I didn't, in those first days that we were organizing the Legion, I, I couldn't do too much then. I was working day and night trying oh, to find yes. the, the printing business. Oh, <laughs> yes. Uh huh. Anyhow, I give great credit to my 
father and mother, what, what, what they did. That's the foundation of the whole Eddie tribe. Oh, yes. My grandfather, when they were in Milan, Ohio, there were some neighbors there. This fellow was down in the basement working. He was down in the basement working all the time. They thought he was a nut. You never get to see him much. He was Thomas R. Edison. <laughs> How about that? So, so he got to do all right, too. Uh huh. <laughs> Well, well, this was an album. We got quite a close to these French officers, and this fellow was artistic. And uh, when I got that book with pictures, he uh, did the artwork mm. on this cover. And, and those are the three battles we've been to by that time. That's pretty good. The champagne. The champagne, the song, the song with the top on the English. That's what song. I see. Our ambulances, we were each responsible for an ambulance. We had to keep it in shape. Mm -hmm. And there were Fords, which was all right because they were light enough. So if we get in the shell hole, I'll show you a shell hole here. It, like a bushel basket on the hole in the ground. And, and you get in there, you can't get out. You wait till two or three soldiers come along, they lift you right up. Oh. This fellow was killed. He was a bloody man. Mm -hmm. He was killed when I was wounded. Uh, what type of uh, automobile did they use for their ambulance? A Ford. A Ford? Oh, yes, Ford. Uh huh. A Ford Model T. Oh. You see, you, you get shrapnel and knock holes through, through like that. Mm hmm. And there, there's a. This is my buddy from college. Where are you? Well, I'm right here. <laughs> With the hat? Yeah. With the tan on? That was a tan that I got selling Saturday evening post when I was a kid. Mm. These are all our We used mm -hmm. to enjoy watching the French, these uh, air battles. And yes. This, this is brought down, a, a young Frenchman, only six, 18 years old, brought that down. And of course, we'd have to, we'd have to take him back. Mm -hmm. take, take him to the hospital. Well, here's the young fellow out there. He's the one that did that. And there's Lulu. Now, Lulu was a German dog that came over our side. <laughs> we adopted him. Oh. Adopted her. <laughs> oh, she wasn't we, that uh, ugly then. No, the dog, yeah. Now, this is a German balloon sent over with uh, propaganda for Americans to come over on their side. They would treat us nice, mm -hmm. no trouble. Mm. This was uh, back in the uh, Repold, uh, when they had oh. bar barracks. Mm -hmm. As soon as the thing still, oh, this, there's, there's this one. Oh, yes. And these two boys were, well, that stove you saw back there, Sibley stove. We live in here, underground. Yes. And there's that Sibley stove, and this fellow started Tried to start his car, it was too cold, and he got mm -hmm. gasoline all up his sleeve, so he went on to dry himself and he exploded. Mm. And this fellow tackled him and tried to push, put the fire mm -hmm. out. It was pretty, you know, a gasoline mm. fire, pretty rough. Yes. Now there's the size of a shell hole. See, a shell knocks yes. a hole in there, and you, you get in there, somebody's been in there, see. You mm -hmm. wait, you wait till two or three Frenchmen come along, they left you out. We took pictures, and then we pooled them, whoever, and we get a lot of prints and trade mm -hmm. and everything. Now here we are, the front is here, and we're here, and that's our dugout. Yes. If they start shelling, we just get in there. Mm -hmm. We just wait for them. They, they, we didn't handle stretchers, they, they brought them back to us. I see. There's some of our, this, this is, only trouble with pictures, you can go and take them when, when something is going on. When there's a battle going on, mm -hmm. you don't get a chance. No. We, we smashed three cars one, one night. They, well, I, I'm washing my car there. Mm -hmm. They uh, 
put on, on a gas barrage, and we had to get them back faster we could, and we got for so, so fast that three of them had head-on collisions. <laughs> well, it's pretty wet. <laughs> this is an army pole. Back. Mm -hmm. We adopted this Belgian boy for a while. I don't know where he came oh, from, yes. but, but he was our buddy, and we fed him and stayed with oh. us. Then he disappeared, nobody knew about him. There's our French sergeant. Oh, yes. We had French officers and American, American officers. Gas masks? Yeah, this is my, my this is Charlie, but he's the one that's still living. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we wore a gas mask right on the side of the car. Oh. This fellow was killed. Mm. That's going into the a new, a new action. Mm -hmm. That's the way traffic wasn't very good. That's the way traffic. Now we had oh. to drive between. See those two trucks are stuck. We had to yes. drive between here, and this is all water. Oh. Spring rain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, it's still wet. Oh yes. Well, that, that's our dugout. Now I'm standing in that shell. You see, that's a pretty deep. One. That's probably two ten. Mm-hmm. And this is where we, if it's our shell, we just dive in there and wait. Oh, yes. But we had to stay on the road. If we had wounded, we couldn't stop or anything. There's an observation balloon being shot down. Mm -hmm. Here's the taxi cab driver. But he was a tough. He was guy. what? Sammy Bernstein, the taxi cab driver. Oh. <laughs> he was a tough guy. Mm -hmm. But there isn't anything he wouldn't do for us, it would be for him. He was as close as that. That's the way the French were took in their guns early. early. Oh, yes. <laughs> Refugees. Uh-huh. They had oxen. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's a wagon load of Pinard. Pinard was very cheap red wine. The French had to have wine, and when the war started, they didn't know what they were going to do, so the Dr. Pinard make a, made a wine out of all the dregs of everything. Oh. <laughs> so we, every morning you get a, what they call a bee down, they wore here a bee down of, of Pinard. Mm -hmm. They don't have much water over there. Mm -hmm. Carry your wine in, huh? Yeah. There's an outlook, outlook post here. Mm, high in the tree. Yeah. And this uh, this was a community inside, way down. They had a regular street somewhere there. Mm -hmm. And we were <laughs> watching it. You know, someone said, there, there goes the, Ger the German Richtop and flying circus. And sure enough, it was. So we all came out and watched all of them. <laughs> they oh, saw us. So, yes. we, so we got back in. Uh -huh. Mind, mind our own business. <laughs> I think that's very expressive. Well, why don't you read this little caption, Mr. Eddy? It's on. Oh, is it? Yes. Well, we're, we're gathered at this old church after 40 hours of steady work at the front without food or sleep. I had some front. French bread in my hand, but too darn tired to eat it. The re rest was short life. We were, or we were soon ordered back to the lines for another 24 hours of work. Shorty Hannah was later killed when I came to find out. I was mm -hmm. with him when he happened mm -hmm. before that. Mm -hmm. Well, here's this stuff too. What do you think of those things? <laughs> oh, could you describe them for me? Well, this is the French. French Corps de Guerre and the Silver Stars is divisional, that's by the division. And that's a uh, Verdun city was was oh a fair sized city, but all together they, they kept taking the Germans had taken and then the French had taken it. There's the that up there. Verdun. V E R D U N. V -E -R -D -U -N. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's very important in my war. Right. But they lost 250,000 men coming and going in that one town. That's all. Mm. Yet, after the thing was over, they, they made these medals and sent them all to what anybody that took part in the thing. Isn't that wonderful? Mm -hmm. This purple Could heart. Could you describe what these uh, different medals look like? Well, here's the French. Over oh, here, it has those green, green stripes and red stripes. Uh -huh. With a star down below. Oh, Dated. 1914, 1918. That was the duration of their. Oh, yes. That's the first one. Now, the, the Purple Heart was started by George Washington. A simple 
in yes. a, a simple purple ribbon is all it had. So it becomes it's presented uh, for under wounded. Mm-hmm. So that's where I got that one. The names on the back. Right? Your names on the back. Well, these are oh. this is sent out. This, this is the war record. That's it's sent your out war record on oh. your record. And there's your eight major battles right there. Oh yes. Could you name them off? Well, there's some some. In, it's the eight battles. Sound and the aim. Now, there's the one I was wounded in Mont Dizzy and Noyon. How, how do you spell that? Mont Dizzy and Noyon. Oh, Mont, M-O-T-D-I-D-I-E-R. The and Champagne Mar. Now, Americans were in the, see, we were next to the Americans. We were mm-hmm. in the Champagne and we were over to the right in the Mar and they had all the time. Now, there's the Ain Mar. That's the Samuel over there. Moose Argon. And this is defensive sector, they call it. I'm right in your light. No, I'm sorry. Defense, defensive Se- sec- sector. Yeah. These other ones are uh, on oh, your state service medal. Oh, yes. It sent all the service and, and Orleans County gave one too for Pro Patria. Mm-hmm. That's an interesting Oh, one. this is this is sent by the French government. Oh, it's... For, for helping out, helping the French Red government. and white, is that the French yeah. of colors? Well... Red and white stripe? Right. Yeah, but they're, they're big, big ones. Oh, I see. Mm-hmm. And that's the service of occupation there. And this is the state. Your state conspicuous, conspicuous service medal. Oh. You have to have more okay. more for all of you know. Uh huh. I was afraid I'd forget all these guys' names, so I I talked them down. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that, that's kind of interesting. Yes, it is. Yeah, we, we did yearbooks. I got interested in that when we started the first one here, a Chevron, in 1912, and I was on the staff, and my father printed it, and we got in there. And that day, uh, you, oh, well, they, were, they were new then, and at that time, you'd have a <coughs> articles by students too, and now it's mainly a picture book. It cost about 50 times more. Yes. But well, we got interested and we, we had as many as 16 of them. Well, one professor taught here what uh, Fairport. And they want to start a book. He said, I don't know just who can do, do it. So, so I went over and we started one there. And we had two down in Pennsylvania, down below the area. Went down in there. All word of mouth. So I got as many as 16 of those. No trouble, they all came at the same time. The rest of the year. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, fill in other, other business. But that was interesting. I like, I enjoyed working with kids. I also, I've had another hobby I didn't tell you about. I got grandchildren all over the world. This uh, exchange student program, we've, we've worked on that a great deal. I, I've been on the committee for ever since it started. And we got, well, we got one down in Brazil that saved my son's family for a year. And we grew to love one another, so we went down to see her. We went down to visit her in Sao Paulo. And today I got a letter from Sweden, from this mighty woman, a lovely young lady. What's the name? M-A-J dash. L I S. The last name is W I L E N. I asked her what that really means. It's like Mary Jewel or something like that in, in our language. Okay. Well, I, I've continued corresponding with them. We have one in, in Tokyo. Uh, son, son and his wife and I went to Tokyo and tried to find her. Uh, Nikki Kaga, N I K K I K A G A. N I what? Nikki, N I K K I. 
last name is K-A-G-N. She stays at the Cash family, Ronnie Cash. Oh. And we tried to find her, come to find out Tag out by Mike Smith in this country. We never found her. She was right there in Tokyo, but we didn't know her father's name, that's the trouble. But she was, uh, but they're all nice too. I, I, I take them to the ice follies and the, the boys, I take the boys to the circus in Russia and buy them with dinner. And then they come to me for advice. One, one fellow, his father owned a tin mine in Bolivia. And he, he uh, of course, naturally would want to follow, follow that line. And he came up to the night before we left and we spent about an hour again. He said, where, where could I go for mining education? I said, well, I've been out in Denver and got the best Colorado uh, School of Mining is the best one you can get. So he went back to Bolivia and by a year or so later, he got a telephone call from Denver. He said, this is, this is it. <laughs> so they come to I, this girl I wrote today, I heard from today, he had a problem. They're my grandchildren. I'm a grandfather. So All right. why not? That's right. And one fellow, Harry Nornamaki in Helsinki, Finland, he stayed here with the Cropsey family, and he very, they speak English very well. So my wife and I were on a cruise, and they were cruise, we pulled in there, and I, I got an interpreter to try to call, he worked in the bank. And he finally got through, of course the bank had all kinds of branches, they got him, and I said, well, oh, Mr. Reddy, I, uh, mine is international uh, monetary matters, and that's, this is the season when they're all here. He said, I don't think they'll let me go. He said, wait a minute. And he asked him, so the president said, you go and stay just as long as you want. And stay on that ship. <laughs> and he did. Uh -huh. He had dinner with us, and then the, uh, the second command took him all over the ship. Up. He'd been, they had a year of compulsory military training. His, his was a Navy. Right the, he showed it for it was up in the day. So he was interested in all the, the captains have them top side there, all the instruments and so forth. So he enjoyed it. And we had another little girl down in, in Indonesia. It's a little, but she could speak English very well. well there, there are always, we got one in New Zealand, one in Australia. Australia. And then we sent them over there. So when they go, anybody goes here, I brought them letters. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to hear from home. But look, when I was in France, the more letters you got from home, the better. So I know all that's they right. So hey, that's been a hobby. I got a that's whole bunch of them. I've had two books, and I've got to start, start a third book because it, it fills right up. Of course, I've got quite a lot of grandchildren of my own. That's the one that worked doing there. Oh, this, this granddaughter was just married. She went to Africa on the way. I mean, oh, yes. Yeah. She and her husband called up from London Sunday. They were on the way back to uh, Houston to set up their home. That's that. Oh, there she is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You want me to turn that off? I don't know. Are no. we doing anything now? I ain't trying with a diary. I ain't trying to do it with nothing going on. It's funny. I'm quite a time. Well, this other fellow and I from college, uh, we, uh, in France, everything sent, the railroad is all centered in Paris, north, south, east, and west. That goes to Paris, you go anywhere. So the front's up the north, and we go to Paris, and then we go. In the winter, we see there's not too much action. You just, what you call a coup de main, to go over to find out who's on the other side. So we, we get vacation two weeks, and we go to, we go to Nice twice. And this war, war field, <laughs> and I, we weren't officers, or anything. we just, we got to get on that train. He says, you can't do it, that's an officer's train. So 
I took the baggage, and he, and he got the porter, bought a guard there, in conversation, nice and neat around behind him. And we, we got on, we got on this officer's train. And I, you know, I saw the harbor, went and sat down pretty soon. A British general was standing on said, what are you doing here? <laughs> So we got out of there, and then we couldn't find it. But uh, some of the some of the officers were very kind to us. They said, "Well, here, come on, you sleep on the floor." It's all right. Okay. About seven o'clock in the morning, the conductor came along and found us, and <laughs> kicked us off the train way down, way down the south of France somewhere. I don't know. We never heard of the place. <laughs> it's fun at that age. Uh huh. Boy, Adventure. That's the, that's the time to do it when when you're young enough to get around and do things or what. Even when I got my orders to home in Germany, Lord, we wanted to get home. And this other fellow, Bill Edwards from Santa Barbara, he's an architect. What's his name? Bill Edwards. Bill Edwards. We uh, went in the station. We thought we had plenty of time to kill. The train was gone. We had our luggage and everything on the troop train. <laughs> so we, we went to Strasbourg, that quaint city, a lovely city. Strasbourg, France. Yeah. Yes. Strasbourg is French or German, but on who's, whose side is it? Who won the war? And we stayed overnight there and we bummed away and finally got back to Paris and of course we got balled out. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That was fun. Mm -hmm. Like like getting on that general train. <laughs> going, going south. At that age you could do anything and, and, and uniform to make a difference. Everybody would That's right. Yes. Well, it's strange now, in, in going from from the front to uh, to Germany. I'm trying to think of that city. Anyhow, we stopped in Luxembourg. And, uh, right. Uh, the boss had two daughters, so we couldn't talk to each other, so I brought my uh, my mail and saw them the stamps, and they were interested in my stamps, and I was interested in their stamps. And pretty soon uh, the French officers came, and I, I was kind of uh, came through, and uh, they wanted food. And I was like, sorry. So they went on, and he called me over and said, look up the chimney, there were a lot of hands hanging around up there. He trusted me. And I couldn't. I couldn't train that. Of course, you got to run the inn. You mm -hmm. got to have food for the inn. 